So what about, um, how many people in the room are, uh, would consider themselves to have a tight glycemic control uh, a program? Uh, when I say tight, I mean 150 or, or less. You try to keep people 150 or less in the OR. Yeah, I know you guys do it for it. They, they do good work there. Anybody else? Okay, one or two hands. Not too many. So that's one area that I think, uh, you know, we could all, uh, again, what is that going to hurt? Especially, you know, if you're not trying to go keep it really tight, like under 100 uh, or something like that. If you just, particularly for the diabetics, well, I know Walt's also, you know, the undiagnosed diabetics, but, uh, but particularly for the diabetics, you know, when I showed you this data in the past from our own collaborative, even people who are known diabetics, there's a fair number of them who are not getting even a single blood glucose drawn intraoperatively. So that, to me, is a huge hole in the proper management of a surgical patient. Yeah. Just right. on that topic, I think the, at least the data is most robust for the cardiovascular surgery population. Um, from at least discussions with nursing staff, I think the continuous in insulin infusion protocol is not easy to maintain through that day one or two post-op. I think that's that's one of yeah. the challenges that resource. Yeah, no, so. that's right. That is not. That's a. But I'm just saying. Well, let's at least do it intraoperatively. You know, until the wound is closed, and hopefully that will be helpful. Well, that, that brings up an issue that I have is that people look at our wound infection rates and they want to know what Dr. Noble's wound infection rate is. But you know what? It's that patient belongs to every single provider right. that they come in contact with. And we, I don't know what that is, anesthesiologist wound infection rate is. And maybe if we started looking at it that way, or convincing them to look at it that way, they take an interest in these measures like normal thermia, euglycemia, that some of our anesthesiologists are really good at. It, and some of them said, oh, don't bother. Yeah. Don't, turn, don't turn the bear on me, I don't care. Yeah. Well, that's absolutely right. I don't think it's a good team thing. I absolutely agree with that. And you know, what we have been finding in the, when Sachin Ketterpal has been here talking <laughs> about the intraoperative database, you know, he, the, one of the first things he looked at was episodes of hypotension intraoperatively. These are, you know, if somebody's, you know, got the gas up a little too high or something and the patient's hypotensive, that correlated with wound infection. So it's not just a surgical thing. It's, a, you know, hypotension can you know, get all vasoconstricted. And uh, so that can be an important aspect of this. What about, um, what about, well, do you, many of your surgeons use local anesthesia um, as, as a uh, either, either as an adjunct or as a primary an analgesia? In many of our outpatient cases, we do, and many of the anesthesiologists uh, encourage us to do that. Yeah. Well, so I want to—I told the story before, but I'll tell it again. When we went to uh, one particular hospital that had a real low wound infection rate. What we found is they did a lot of cases under um, local anesthesia, much more so than any other hospital in our collaborative. And so that generated this hypothesis. Maybe there's something about the local anesthesia. And at, 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 you know, you decrease the amount of general anesthesia you would get. And general anesthesia is probably not good because you know, it, there's cytokine release, there's steroid release, there's vasoconstriction that may occur. Um, and at the same time, also, uh, we were wondering, you know, are there any microbial properties to the local anesthetics that are typically used? And yes, there are. We, I think I presented that one day here, that there's lots of profound antimicrobial activity of the cane anesthetics. So when we did this study uh, using the, pup, the public use file, the NSQIP, uh, and we got four CPT codes that could arguably be done under general or local anesthesia, like breast biopsy, umbilical hernia repair, inguinal hernia repair, or wide local excision, I think were the four that we looked at. And we did this propensity matching thing again, and got like 400 cases in each group. And what we found, very well matched groups, except for local anesthesia as the primary anesthesia. And there was the SSI rate in the local anesthesia group was half of what it was in the general anesthesia group. So I think that the idea of, you know, packing the whole wound with marking at the end of the case may have some antibacterial effects, and it also decreases the need for PCA post-op. PCA is known to be associated with higher 
SSI rates because the opioids that are immunosuppressive, that you're getting a kind of constant opioid dose that is immunosuppressive. So there are some reasons to advocate, and I have all said, I don't think you're going to, you know, it's hard to change behavior in surgeons. If they're used to doing it under general, they're probably always going to do it under general. But you could say um, the local anesthesia should be an adjunct to general anesthesia. Why not? Just use it, and then you may not need as much a general inhalational agent during the case, number one. And number two, we probably wouldn't need as much PCA uh, stuff afterwards. And if it has this antimicrobial effect, you know, we'd be better off. So I, I think that that is something that we need to push. We've got a paper that we're writing about that right now to, uh, to advocate local anesthesia as part of a general uh, anesthesia regimen. That came out of the MSQC. Okay, what are the strategies? Haven't we talked about that we think might be important, Greta? Now, these are collected 30 days out, right? So were there any post-operative strategies that you may have used or thought of or that you are going to in the future? The, the biggest post strategy would, would be the glucose control throughout the patient's hospitalization. And, and on the board or the units or anything? Well, we had that in place. We have a very good um, diabetic management on our inpatients. We had it in the pre-op area, but we didn't do anything interoperatively, and we did And the connection there post-operatively wasn't there. And now it's going to be continuously through, and it'll be initiated on every surgery patient with the boarding slip. And when we initiated the inpatient diabetic control, it was for non it was for non-surgical patients as well. We actually saw the incidence of hyperglycemia go down significantly with no increase in hypoglycemic episodes. And it, it was just managed better. And it was trying to bring that process into all of our surgical patients. Between you know, I saw an interesting, you know, Patch Dillinger, he's the guru about hyperglycemia from professor at uh, University of Washington. And he, he has this, you know, saying, he also likes to say that white cells don't work as well when they're swimming around in syrup. Mm -hmm. And that, that is sort of the underlying rationale for this whole thing. But uh, I think, well, I saw one thing uh, the hospital was doing that's kind of interesting. They, uh, the, glu the finger stick glucoses on the floor, whenever they're done, are, wired, are wirelessly transmitted to a central, to the nursing station. And you keep track of them. So from a quality point of view on a surgical floor, for instance, you could see what the average 7 a.m. finger stick is in, on, or 5 p.m. finger stick is on your floor to kind of know where you are. Are you keeping good control of these people or not? And so that technology is out there. I think I'd like to get that for our hospital. If we, we yeah, well, it, it is. It's twice as expensive. Yeah. But the, the alternate is that the nurse just docks it right after the procedure is done and it gets entered into your electronic Oh, operation. so you do that? Yeah. Okay. That's, I think that's a great idea because you could say, how's my surgical floor doing in glycemic control? That'd be a good thing to know. Yeah. 